Then we proceed to update our decision tree as follows. This is the same decision tree as we saw just now, except uh, two things. We have populated the posterior probabilities to our branches, the probability of I1, I2, I3 happening, and also evaluated from right to left all the uh, new expected values. Now, expected value will change for event load uh, either because the payload, the payoff, sorry, uh, has been changed, 0 0.5 get changed to 0 0.7, but it didn't happen, or the probabilities are changed. And in this case, yes, that did happen, right? Because we have revised our probabilities. So recalculating the sum product of pay, uh, payoffs with the revised posterior probabilities, we get a new expected value. So we do that for each of the branch. Yeah. Now let's um, look at our posterior probability because that's the most important information here. How do we get these numbers, 0.43 and so on? Well, the thing is, in this branch, we have decided to hire the consultant. The consultant can come back with, I recommend S1 will happen. I recommend S2 will happen. I recommend S3 will happen, right? So uh, separately indicated by high, moderate, low. What's the chance? Because notice that this is event node, so we need to tag onto each branch a probability of happening. That's precisely P of I1, P of I2, P of I3 that we have early on calculated. So we you know, annotate the, the, the decision tree here. Then we move on to uh, if consultant says I1, right? Consultant says economy will be good, so we encounter I1. Then we can decide to use D1, D2, or D3. But all these branches here will be fanning off from the path that we already heard from the consultant, consultant says S1 will happen. True, right? Therefore, this probability, S1 happening, is no longer just S1 happening, but S1 happening given that it is a fact that consultant says S1 will happen. Likewise, the S2, S3 here, they are not just the usual probability, P of S2, P of S3, but P of S2, given that I1 has happened. P of S3, given that I1 has happened. And all these come naturally under the column I1. 0.4375, 0.3750, 0.1875. Right? Uh, so we'll copy those three probabilities, update them here. And because the next three branches, S1, S2, S3, they are the same thing, given um, that consultant has said S1 will happen, right? So uh, we copy the same column of uh, under I1 into all these three branches here. Now, if consultant says S2 will happen, which means we have encountered the event I2. I2 is the event that consultant says S2 will happen. In that case, we look under P of S1 given I2 has happened. P of S2, P of S3 given I2 has happened. That corresponds to the second column here. Yeah? Given I2, what is P of S1, S2, S3. So we copy that second column probabilities onto all the branches that fan out from the moderate branch. And finally, the same thing, uh, if I3 has happened, consultant says economy will do badly, then all the S1, S2, S3 will be conditioned after I3. So given I3 has happened, what is P of S1, S2, S3? So we have all these probabilities copied to the branches here. Once we have the updated posterior probabilities, we can sum product it with the payoffs and get our updated EV, 0 0.4250, uh, 0 0.6815 and all that. So we have to just calculate that all over again uh, because even though the branch posterior probabilities are the same in each of the sub-branches, the payoffs are different. So we have to calculate them, we'll get different EV values. Right? Then when it comes to the decision node, the EV for that decision node is the max of the branch EVs. So we'll pick 0.9688 and copy it here, uh, much like what we have done earlier on. Okay. So likewise, amongst the three, we pick 0.5346, amongst the three, we pick 0.3436 and label it accordingly. Then, 
we can move one more step further and calculate the EV for this decision node, which is the sum product of the branch probabilities with the EVs of the branches, which we have. So we just use 0.16 times 0.9688 plus 0.535 times 0.5346 plus uh, 0 0.305. 0 0.16 times uh, 0 0.9688. Remember that's in millions. Right? Uh, 0 0.535 times 0 0.5346 plus 0 0.305 times 0 0.3426. So if you do that calculation and verify it, you should see 0 0.5455. So we label it here. So you notice that all these are done in a kind of mechanical way. We didn't do and we didn't exercise any uh, contextual knowledge about this situation. Just basically evaluating the tree. Okay. Um, and the 0.49 was from the previous unassisted uh, EV without touching the, the consultant. And between the two, 0.5455 is higher than 0.49. So we say. Uh, that the max of the EV will be 0.5455 and that's the EV for this root decision node. So answer is we should hire the consultant and then after that we don't know what the consultant says so we need to um, do a what if. If consultant says economy will do well then we should uh, what is it? Do D3. Select D3 all right, and expect a payoff of 0 0.9688. If consultant suggests economy will be so-so moderate, then choose D2 because we will then expect a moderate EV of 0 0.5346. And finally, uh, if consultant were to say S3, so we encounter I3, then pick, uh, what is it, D1. Okay.